I keep building and building and modifying this BGH-1 rig. This rig is now my new anamorphic setup. I have a few new toys on the front end and in the back end, and I'm going to break down this whole system right here and show a little bit of test footage of what this looks like. What you are seeing here is the BGH-1, the Siri 35, F1.8 anamorphic, uh, 1.33, and then this is a brand called Greyjoy. I actually haven't heard of this brand up until recently. Greyjoy makes budget-friendly anamorphics and anamorphic adapters, sort of similar to Siri, but Siri, I think, came out first. With this product here, this Greyjoy, this is a Greyjoy anamorphic adapter that you could stack on to another anamorphic. So this is an anamorphic lens with an anamorphic adapter attached to the lens. Why would anybody wanna do this? Because when you stack anamorphic lenses, you multiply the squeeze factors and you, you'll get a more cinematic look on uh, the, depending on what kind of camera you're using. Luckily with the BGH-1 and uh, some of the other Panasonic cameras, you're able to shoot in a four by three aspect ratio, uh, which they, they call an anamorphic mode. And this one, the BGH-1, I think it's limited to 4K. The uh, GH-6 can shoot 5.8K. And uh, the, um, some of the full frame cameras could shoot maybe a little bit more than that. The, the latest ones from Panasonic. But this is a micro four thirds. With a four by three sensor, open gate. And you're, I'm using a 1.33 squeeze factor. I actually just get a 16 by nine aspect ratio when I unsqueeze it. But then when I combine it with this three point, uh, 1.35 times anamorphic lens. Now it's 1.35 times 1.33, which is, it's, it's close to a 1.8 on a four by three sensor. That is really similar, or it's getting close to what you see in Hollywood. The, the big Hollywood anamorphic films, the, the squeeze factor is like a two times squeeze factor. So you wanna get as close as possible to the two times squeeze factor but you need a camera that can accommodate the anamorphics. And, and this, this, this does. The lens ring here, it just screws on. It, it's exact same diameter of the back here, screws directly on to the Siri 35 without any, any other step up rings or step down rings. It goes straight. And then there's these knobs here that you use to align so that you get proper uh, horizontal uh, al alignment or when you're using anamorphics. And what's also cool about the Greyjoy here is that you also have a lens thread here. It's a 77 millimeter lens thread, which is a very common lens thread across a lot of Canon L series lenses. There's a metal cap here, not a screw on, it's just you, you tighten it up right there. That's kind of nice, it's very sturdy. Uh, this is heavy, by the way. So I also have a brace here. I added this lens brace that, uh, that connects to the 15 millimeter rods. I had to get longer rods too. I usually just use an eight. And now this, I believe, is a foot long, 12 inch rods. I have two. I guess I could get uh, 18 inch rods that might uh, help help a little bit more if I want to add a follow focus, which I should add a follow focus because this is um, now a manual focus lens. So the follow focus would be right at the edge here or I'll have to push the rail a little bit here. Um, I think uh, 18 mil rods is probably probably the, the way to go with this, with this setup. The other things you have to do is on the Siri here, you have to set the focus to infinity. That way, all of the focus is controlled up here. And once you set this to infinity, because this, these Siri lenses, they're easy to move. Uh, the people have been saying that you should just tape this down so that it doesn't move, but um, I, I'll do that later. The focus wheel here is a pretty long throw. So this isn't something that I think you could uh, really operate yourself, although I'm planning to operate myself. You, you might need a proper focus puller. Greyjoy says on the side, which is nice. It says the instruction says exactly what this is. So it's a 1.35 and f2.8, and then it gives you the conversions. 
right here on the lens. So it says, if you use a 1.33 anamorphic taking lens, it becomes a 1.8. If you use a 1.5 anamorphic lens, this becomes a two times lens. And then if you just screw this directly on a spherical lens, it's, it's a 1.35. One of the other things besides a follow focus that I need to get is in order to view the proper aspect ratio, you need a monitor that can de-squeeze or de-squeeze it in the camera and then send the de-squeezed out to the monitor. The monitor I'm using in this case is, let me go up here. This one's a new one. I'm gonna review this in another video. This is a uh, Port Keys LH5P2. This one is supposed to be able to control the BGH1 with, uh, with the touch screen via a remote. And let me, I'm gonna take off my camera here off this tripod so I can show you a little bit of the details of this monitor. And I will do a proper mini review of this. So it's HDMI in, HDMI out, only HDMI. And here on the bottom, there's a connection for a remote and the remote comes out here. This is the, the remote control that uh, is, usually have if you want to you know have a remote control start and stop and exposure and that stuff i think panasonic sells something like that or you can get third party adapters that do that third party devices that do that port keys is supposed to do that and then using this system you're supposed to be able to control some of the basic uh, exposure controls on um, using the touch screen and not having to even touch the camera in practice so far, it doesn't work as advertised, but eh, I, I like that it could do that. Also for power, there's a power out and it's going right into my new toy here. This is the small rig 99 V-mount battery. It's pretty cool because on the top here, the port keys come supplied with this DC and this fits perfectly to the 8 volt out. The small rig also has a 12 volt out, has a USB-A and a USB-C. USB-C, I could take out and uh, power, I think I could power the BGH1 with it, um, but I know that the GH6s, I can power the GH6 with this port right here. And I, and I just use my MacBook, my MacBook uh, USB-C to USB-C cable. And then on this side, you have one D-tap out. This battery here that I've already, the, the Panasonic battery, this is what I use to power the camera. The V-mount powers all the accessories. If you look at some of the other anamorphic adapters on the market, you won't see adapters that are this flexible, that are this versatile, versatile for low budgets. This one was about, I think it sells for about 500 to $600. And then the anamorphic lenses, these Siri lenses, I'm seeing them for under 500 nowadays, and, and sometimes I see them on sale. But the cool thing about the anamorphic uh, Greyjoy here, so you take off this lens cap here, all metal, and since this is a 77, you could take regular Canon lens caps, this is a 77, and I can just pop it on here, and now I have a lens cap, and all of the filters that I use on all my L-series lenses, I can just screw on here. So for example, if I wanna have some neutral ND filters on there, I have this Freewell, this is a variable ND with a mist, and this is a 77 mil thread mount. I just screw this on here like this, and then now I have a variable ND on this setup here, and I do see a little bit of vignetting on the corners, when, it, when I use this or pretty much a lot of any other kind of uh, ND or filters, but I can crop in a little bit because the anamorphic is pretty wide. The 35 is, I think, an ideal Siri lens to use with this, but I'm also gonna try this 50 millimeter anamorphic lens that I just got. This was, I think, the first anamorphic lens, 1.33 anamorphic lens that Siri released right before the 35. This also has a 67 millimeter lens thread 
that will screw on exactly to the Greyjoy. And then the last thing that you'll need with this is the minimum focus distance, even though it, um, the series minimum focus distance was terrible, you need to be pretty far, like a three feet. This one is a little better at 0.7, but if you wanna get close, you need to put diopters. So I also purchased some diopters from Newer. These were not, not too expensive. And then you have different multipliers of uh, diopters. Diopters are magnifying glasses that you just put on the lens. So this one is a plus one. I have a plus one, plus two, plus four, plus 10. And then I just screw this on here. I'll demonstrate this in the test footage you're gonna see soon. And you just screw this on and then it increases your minimum focus distance. Obviously you can't focus to infinity when you put these on, but for those close-up shots, these help. This is at f5.6. This is the absolute closest focusing distance of this lens combo. I'm at f5.6. I'm gonna put on a plus two diopter. This is the plus two diopter. I'm gonna take it off now. <laughs> 